This video will give an introduction to the Creo parametric integration for DDM. It will cover creating a part record, adding it to an assembly, creating a drawing and releasing the part assembly and drawing. Finally, it will cover making a change to the assembly and up issuing the changes. So currently I'm logged into DDM and we can see models and drawings in the database. If I close this window, behind it I have Creo Parametric open with a model that I've been working on. So we're going to complete this just by adding a chamfer to each end. With those changes complete we're going to store this back to DDM using the save command under the PDM ribbon menu. So the PDM ribbon menu gives us all of the commands that we need to use to interact between Creo and DDM. So if we save this, then the part properties window opens, allowing us to add a part number and description etc. to this new record. Using this button, we can open DDM's automatic numbering tool, which gives us configurable numbers that we can use for naming our parts and documents etc. So I'm going to use manufacture component to create the number and the description for this is wrist pin. With that complete I can save the changes back to DDM and we can see that the part record is saved. So if I close this from session, arrays not displayed, and then return to DDM using search and open. Currently I'm looking at my recent items and at the top of the list is the wrist pin that I've just created. If we have a look at the properties of this. Then while this is work in progress then I can make changes to the description etc but we can also see the material that it's made from, who created it and when it was created. So here we have an assembly and I want to assemble the wrist pin into this piston head assembly. So if we open the assembly into session then again from the PDM ribbon I can select load subpart which will return me to DDM so that I can load the wrist pin into session. And now using standard Creo techniques we can assemble this component into the assembly. And our wrist pin is assembled. So again using the same save function we can store the changes back to the database and our assembly is now updated. So we're going to complete this work by creating a drawing of the assembly. If I just have a look at the properties I'm going to copy this number to use for my drawing. So if we select to create a new drawing I can paste the number in there and then click on OK. Now for the purposes of the demo I'm not going to dimension the drawing, we're just going to save this back to the database and again we're going to use the, the same function. So we're going to use the save command and I'm keeping the same name and description but that can change so if you, if you have a different numbering system for your drawings then that can be modified, in this case I'm keeping it the same. I know that my assembly was issued B so I'm just going to update that and we click on OK to store the drawing back to DDM. The drawing title block is updated automatically and so with those changes stored I can close this from session and we can return to DDM. So in the DDM user interface we can now see the drawing has been stored. Every time we store a drawing we create a PDF preview so that users without Creo installed can view the drawings and you'll see that we have an optional watermark that we can put onto the PDF indicating in this case that this is work in progress and shouldn't be used. So within the DDM user interface we can also start to examine structure. So if we have a look at the drawing we can see that this drawing is linked to this assembly and we can see that this assembly uses these components. We can also see from the assembly itself related drawings 
and we can also start to examine where used information so I can see that this piston head assembly is used on two higher level assemblies. So with our changes complete I'm going to release this drawing. So if I right click on the drawing and select change state then in the release manager window we can see the full structure of this assembly and we can see it already has release components within it we just need to complete this by releasing the wrist pin and then the top level assembly so we're going to select uh, released from here and we can add some release notes and our assembly is now released. What we're going to look at now is making a change to this assembly and we're going to modify the wrist pin. So if I once again load this released assembly into session and then if we open the wrist pin what we're going to do is to put a hole down the middle of it so if we just use standard Creo techniques to modify this part. So with our component modified uh, we can store this back to DDM. Remember that this is a release component and so I don't have permission to overwrite this and if I try to save it I'll get a message that I'm not able to update this component. So what we're going to use is the save as function to copy or to make a copy of this in the database. If there was a related drawing then that could be pulled into session and copied as well. In this case there's, there's not so we're just going to modify this. So as before we assign a new number and we'll just update the description to say center bore. And because this is replacing an existing component, I'm going to keep a record of the old number under this custom attribute. So if we click on OK, our new part is saved. If we have a look at the assembly, the assembly is now using the new component. In this case, we're going to create a new issue of this assembly and its related drawing. So let's retrieve the drawing and then from here we're going to say save new issue so this is the drawing and assembly we'll go to the next issue and we're going to fill in some change information so if you have uh, change orders ECNs, ECRs then you can fill in the change number here um, and a description of the change in this case wrist pin replaced so we'll complete the change by clicking on OK Our drawing is updated, our revision history is populated for us automatically and this is now issue C of this assembly in session. So we can close these now from session and return to DDM and here's the new issue of the assembly at the top of my recent items list you'll see that issue B that was previously released is now marked as under review indicating that there is a change taking place on this assembly. Before we release these changes we're just going to look at one other aspect of DDM so we're going to take this assembly and every time we store an assembly to, to DDM we in the background create a bill of materials so if I have a look at the bill of materials editor for this assembly we can see that it consists of piston head, oil ring, compression ring, etc. with the correct quantities. Now there are other things that I can do with this bill of materials. I can order it, I can modify quantities if I want. But what we're going to look at here is adding a component that I've not modeled in the CAD environment but something that I might want included on the bill of materials. So I'm just going to minimize this. I'm going to have a look here under my category browser at my miscellaneous parts and in here I have 
uh, a lubricant. So these could be adhesives, lubricants, tapes, things that I might want to add to the bill of materials, things that I've already got adopted in the system. It's this one that we're going to take, but what we can also see is if we have a look at the relations, this has a related data sheet that users can open and view to make sure that this has the correct properties for what they need. So I'm going to take a copy of this component, so right click copy reference, I'm going to return to the bill of materials editor and I'm going to paste this into my bill of materials. Now because this hasn't come from the CAD system it has no idea of quantity and so I can add the quantity here. In this case I'm going to say 10 milliliters and what I can also do is I can add notes if I like so apply to whatever it may be. So if I apply that my bill of materials is now updated. Now this bill of materials we can print it as a report, we can save it as a CSV file but there is also within DDM an enterprise update mechanism that can automatically publish this bill of materials in an electronic format for import into uh, an ERP system and that can either be done manually or it can be triggered by the release of an assembly. So uh, we'll click on OK. I'm going to return to my recent items and if we have a look at the structure of this then we can see this uh, lubricant added to the bill of materials and shown in the structure. So with my changes complete I'm going to release this assembly. Again we'll expand all and now we can see we've got the new center pin and the piston head assembly all ready for release. And we will change this again to released and click on OK. So with the new revision or issue of the piston head assembly released you can see that the old issue is now marked as superseded. If we again look at the properties of this and have a look under change notes we can see the changes that have taken place on this assembly. Finally what we're going to take a look at is if I have a look at the released assembly and have a look at the bill of materials then I can do a bill of materials comparison with the earlier issue of the um, bill of materials and so that I can now see the changes that have been made to this bill of materials. So this item has been removed these two items have been added uh, and so we can start to understand the changes that take place on bills of materials. So this video gave an overview of the Creo integration for DDM and shows how to create parts, drawings and assemblies. It also shows how to release information, edit bills of materials and then how to up issue changes made to models and drawings.